I need you to be pretty sure on this on this range. I, I need to be 95% sure, but I don't want a huge range. Or I want 99% sure, but I don't want you this far out. I want you just, I want your range to be pretty small. That means, if you think, just think about the logic here. If you want a smaller range, and you still need to be a certain level of confident, you can't change your confidence. Okay, that's given. If you can't change how confident you want to be, well, then you're going to have to take a bigger sample. Because by taking a bigger sample, you more accurately approximate a population. You with me on that? So the larger your sample, the more specific you, you can be and say, hey, yeah, I'm 95% sure, but my large sample out here says that I'm pretty sure it's in the small range. That's what we're doing here, is we're finding the sample size that's required to come up with a 4% margin of error or a 1% or whatever you want to do, that percent margin of error. Are you guys with me on this? Now, I gave you two formulas. You have to know which to use when. I'm going to give you two cases down here in just a bit. The first case says you already have some sort of a sample population or proportion of success that you can use. So from a previous sample or something like that, or maybe you, you did a sample, it just wasn't good enough, you somehow have some sort of statistic on that information. You with me? The other one is a worst case scenario. Now you might be wondering, well, wait, what's happening between this formula and this formula? Well, what's the only difference? What do I have here that I don't have here? Yeah. A worst case scenario is this. You don't know anything about the proportion of successes and you don't know anything about the proportion of failures. If that's the case, then what you do, watch closely where this 0.25 comes from, what you do is you assume that both of them are 0.5 because 50-50 is the worst you can get. Otherwise, you'd know something about it, right? So 50-50 is the worst you can get. Can you tell me what is 0.50 times 0.50. That's 0.25. Where this 0.25 is coming from is actually this. Watch on the board. You're multiplying this times this, only you're assuming the worst case scenario, 50-50. 50-50 means this little section is 0.25. Are you with me on where that comes from? That's going to give you the largest possible sample size, but it's going to absolutely ensure that you have the margin of error correct. Are you with me on that piece of information? It's going to give you a larger sample size than this. But if you don't know anything about it, it's going to give you a larger sample size than this would, but it's going to absolutely ensure that your margin of error will be correct. You follow? Okay, well, let's try. What we want to do, we want to construct, this is how it would be done in real life. Right? If you want to construct a confidence interval, you're probably not just going to go, I think I'm going to take a sample of 40 people. That sounds good. You're probably going to want to do a little research, right, and find out how confident you want to be. Firstly, we want to be how confident here? How much? 95%. We want to be 95% confident. So that, that's, that's important. We also want to figure out what margin of error we want. Because by getting a margin of error that we, we want, that, that's going to make a, an interval that we like. We don't want a, a huge interval. If you guess at 40 people, sure, you might be able to run the money, but you might have an interval that's, that's way too wide. All right, so we're going to do a little research first. This is how it would be done in real life. You say, okay, I need to, to make this confidence level. I want to be 95% confident, but I also want a margin of error of 4%. I don't want a large margin of error. I want a small margin of error. You with me on this? So we're going to go ahead and find the sample size that we need to make that happen. And number one, I say, okay, here's what happened in 1997. In 1997, someone did like a census, so let's, let's say, or was, I'm sorry, a huge sample, and found out that 16.9% of people use email. Raise your hand if you use email. That is everybody, okay? So, but this is, how old is this? It's a long time ago when email wasn't very popular, which was kind of getting started. I remember those days, sadly. Um, this is a long time ago where not everyone used email. 16.9% of the United States population used email. Here's option number one. Option number one is if you have some information about, your about a previous sample that deals with your population parameter in some way, like in this case, 16.9% of the people used email. We can use that in this type of a formula. Okay, we can use that here. Let's see how that would work. We're going to identify all these pieces of information. Firstly. How much is N? How much is N? What does N stand for? <coughs> Have I been given a sample size? In fact, that's what I'm looking for. I don't know. I don't know what that is. 
Okay, moving right along. Uh, what is our p hat for this situation? Notice what we're talking about. But by the way, what is a success in this particular case? What's a success? Great, people use email. What's the proportion of success that I would use from this situation? Okay, am I going to put 16.9 percent, which is what as a decimal? Great, 0.169. I'm getting this from this little piece of information that says back a long time ago, this was the proportion of success, or the proportion of people have an email. That was that. Can you figure out Q hat? Hopefully, if you found P hat, you can figure out Q hat. It should be point eight three one. So far, so good. So, and that's what we're looking for. P hat came from this piece of information. Q hat, well, we can find that from P hat. One minus P hat. The last thing you got to find out in order to use your formula, well, well, is these two things. We already have our P hat and our Q hat. We're going to find our n. You need to know this. You need to know this. You all tell me right now. How do you find this? That. You should know. You should know how to do that. How do you find that? What's your What's that Z alpha over two stand for again? We just covered it. It is a Z score, but what specifically is it? A critical value. What's the critical value? This should be in your head already, actually. What's the critical value for a 95% confidence level? 1.96. Great. That, that's critical value. So we know that this is 1.96. How are we finding that? Well, those things don't change. If you want to be 95% confident, you're talking about a critical value of 1.96. Hey, let's see if you're good at this. If you want to be 90 percent confident, what would your critical value be? 1.645. Somebody else, if you want to be 99 percent confident. Great. Those are critical values. That's what this and this and this stand for and it's based on your confidence level. That's the only way that you incorporate your confidence level is with that information. Not sure if you're with me. Okay. Last thing, there's one thing we need to do. We need to find out our E. Now, your E will be given to you. Everything will be given to you in this case, except for your sample size. What is your E? 4%. Are you going to put 4? No. What are you going to put? 0. 0.4? No. Oh, okay. So when you're talking about 4%, 4%, you're going to put 0. 0.04. Now, now, listen carefully. A huge mistake happens when I give you the test because I'm going to ask you to find a sample size with proportions. I'm also going to ask you to find a sample size for means. If I ask you for four points, four, four as a number, E is four. If I ask for a margin of error of four percent, that's when you change it to a decimal. Okay, you need to be pretty clear on that when you're talking about a percent and when you're not. For proportions, yeah, we're talking about four. It's got a percent there. That's point zero four. Don't change things that don't need to be moved, like like uh, if four points or, or four dollars or something like that. Those don't j change the decimals. However, four percent, that would. This is point zero four. Do we have all the information to fill that formula out? Do it. See what you get. Check your work and the work on the board. Don't just copy this down. You should have done this on your own. But did you get exactly this thing on your paper? Mm -hmm. yeah. Including the squares, right? Don't forget those squares. <coughs> one good way to do this, one good way to do this on a calculator, figure this one out first. Figure out the point zero four squared first. Write that one down because you won't have to round it very much. But you shouldn't round it at all. This is going to be uh, point zero zero one six or something. Yes, 0 0.0016. So you write this down, and then the rest of it you can do with one calculator operation. You do 1.96 squared, you press enter. Then you multiply by 0.169, press enter. 
multiply by 0 0.831, press enter, and then finally divide by 0 0.0016, that's what this is. <coughs> Have you done that? Have you done that? Yes. Okay, very good. So you did 1.96 squared, yes? yes? Times this, times this, divided by this thing. What'd you get? You got something. <coughs> What'd you get? 337.194. You got 337 point something? Did you guys get 337 point something? Wait, say that again? 337.194. Okay. So what you're going to go out, you're going to take a sample. Well, what's N? What's N? You need to know what N is. What's N? Sample size. Sample size. You're going to go out there and you take a sample of 337.19 people. I'd hate to be the point one nine people. <laughs> My leg would like to take a survey, please. <laughs> is that going to work? No. What are you going to do? Right. Now, the question is, round it up, round it down. <coughs> Think about it. 337.19 is the exact value you would need to get a margin of error of 4%. That's what you just did. You understand what you just did, right? That's the sample size you would need. Is 337 going to cut it? No, that's going to be slightly more than 4%. So if you get a decimal in this context, you have to round it up. You've got to go, okay, no matter what the decimal is, round it up. Now, if it's 337 even, that will probably rarely ever happen, then great. But if you have any sort of decimal at all, round it up. Because then 338 will give you just slightly less than 4%. So you're going to round this up and do N equals 338. What this stands for, again, for the last time, this is the sample size that you will need in this situation to have a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval, where your margin of error is only 4%. Nod your head if you're, you're okay with that. So you haven't done the confidence interval, this is just the sample size you would need to get that margin of error that you were looking for. That's how you do this in real life. Now, is this what's actually going on right now? So we used a very old piece of information to base our sample size on, right? I'm probably guessing, I mean, this is just, this is out there, but I'm probably guessing that more than 20% of people use email right now in the United States. Maybe it's 2011, right? Right? Okay. So I'm just guessing that there, there's more than that. So what if we went about to say, you know what? Email's been on the rise lately. It's, at least that's what I've been reading on the internet. I'm right. Um, the email's on the rise and mail is going down the tube. So maybe I don't want to use this piece of information because it's actually not very accurate. In that case, if I say, I'll move number two over there actually. Case number two. I say, you know what, even though we had a piece of information regarding email usage in the past, it's pretty old, it's not very accurate. Let's assume we know nothing about P hat. So nothing about the sample proportion of success in this case. Assume we knew nothing about previous email usage. 